Jesus, open your mouth and begin to pray. Prophesy down into his life this moment. Yes. God will always make him to rejoice and to celebrate on account of all the seeds the Lord has given even unto him. Yes. Pray this moment. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, lift up his right before the Lord. As the Lord has been able to bind them together, that the Almighty God is going to watch over her, and the Almighty God is going to strengthen even her, that God Almighty in other dimension is going to make her to be a source of blessing, even unto Papa in the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Yes. 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 She has always been there together with him along the journey of life. Yes. Yes. Yes, that the Lord of heavens will sustain her. Yes. For the glory of his name. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, sing the song along with me. For this God is our God. Jerusalem. The end of the world is around those who trust him. Father, may we pray this hour. 
you will encamp around him. You will encamp around his wife. You will encamp around his children. All his seeds in the mighty name of Jesus. But I'm going to mind it and I love of all ages. If there be any plan that is not of you, on account of the person of God, on account of his wife, on account of all his seeds that you have given to him, we decree this moment that all such plans will be frustrated. We put to say now, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord of heaven will pray. As I bless you, people of the ancient times will work with you. The Lord will bless the person of God. But I know that my will will sustain you. But I go to pray for his wife. We thank you because you, you have been able to bind them together ever since. And God and you have been used to have in a very special way to be source of strength, source of blessing in the life of Papa Salako. We pray for her this moment. You will never depart away from her. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I go to her eyes will never see evil. In the mighty name of Jesus. We can bless. That I go not mind the time of all ages shall run away from her. In the mighty name of Jesus. But I go not marry, you shall keep us safe. You shall keep us secure. From all the hands of this world. In the mighty name of Jesus. But I go not mind you. We thank you for now. We also pray with all the children, all the grandchildren. God of heaven, God of the world. Surround them with your power. Surround them with your presence. And we also pray that they have given feet to honor up our path today. Father God, the eternal rock of all ages, I pray that heaven will honor all these children in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father God, we thank you for praying that come this morning to come and rejoice with Papa this hour. We also bring the glory. You will eat the glory. Eat the glory. Honor me in the mighty name of Jesus. That things of joy. And things of celebration will never depart away from their homes, depart away from their own lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord will grant unto each and every one the blessings, the favor of longevity. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for the hour. We give you the praises. We give you the adoration, Lord, for you are the living God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's clap for Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen. But congratulations. Happy birthday to you. Amen. By the grace of God. We are not going to be having the thanksgiving today. But Papa will be having the thanksgiving tomorrow at the church at Victory Christian Fellowship, that church on the wall. So if you want to be part of that, of that thanksgiving tomorrow, you are welcome to come. You are welcome to be part of this. But before we sing the recession I hear, I mean the final hymn that our sister will come and lead us. As we sing this song, I want all of us to rise up together and I want all to say happy birthday, I mean happy birthday song to Papa. Let's rise up and sing this song. Let's begin. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Glory be to God. Sister, I will come and lead us in the closing. Let us remain standing for the closing. Jesus is mine.
making and allowing us to come together to rejoice with Papa today. Thank you for the minister who has handled the whole service. We thank you for the choir. We thank you for the musician. We thank you for every part of the occasion. We thank you in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be with us now, forevermore. Amen. Surely, forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our, our brother, Dr. Simon, for this day. Will you please come forward? We are back from church now. So everybody has to be free because we are not in church again. Baba? I yeah, welcome everybody to this occasion. It's, uh, it's supposed to be a surprise to Baba, but not surprise to us because uh, I was part of the cool plan. Uh, Baba is somebody that I've known all my life. I've known him all my life. We come from the same town. I would call my town village. You know? Now I come from Sam. We come from the same town. Baba was my father's very good friend. It's like a it's like a brother. Same club. You are the same club. Remember the same club. It's like a big brother to my mom. My mom calls him for that. Mother, mommy. Mother. <laughs> Baba. I don't think I have a color with Baba. Baba is senior. I'm senior. First name is senior. My first name is senior. So we, we have a lot in common. It's like my dad. And uh, it's not easy to be edified. When Baba came in today, I said, look at Baba. And I saw a beautiful woman by his side. I said, uh, it's not easy. If you look at Baba, I see the very handsome man. Do you know how Baba was like 40 years ago? There's nobody in this room that was as handsome as him. It's not easy for this young man to catch this beautiful lady. But catch and keep up till now. <laughs> I was listening to Baba's remark. Baba said, uh, can you 80, 90? I don't know about 100. <laughs> Baba, if you want to go at 100, who will you need this woman for now? Who will you need that for? Eh? No, you will be 100, 110. <laughs> if there is a problem, we will organize for you. We keep you until God says take. You know, it's not uh, it's not just getting old that's important. You are old and healthy. As long as you have good health, you can I mean God can be graceful to you and give you even one twenty years. I know I read my Bible. Remember Moses, Baba, you remember Moses in the Bible? Moses had a lot of work to do for God. God loved him so much, gave him so many years. God did not want to leave the body of Moses to the Israelites. Moses went to the mountain and never came back. And has anybody had any history of how Moses was buried in Bible? He never came back. Don't send Baba to any mountain. No? We will bury him when he's old enough, in Jesus' name. So I welcome all the guests. Same old faces. Same old faces. I remember a couple of years ago when this uh, this same uh, oh, I see the same old faces, and I thank God for your lives. I thank God that we are able to be here today. Uh, it's um, it's uh, there's a lot of food and drinks. They say we can't drink beer, we can't drink alcohol. 
If you have any problems with that, see me behind the counter, okay? If you have any problems with that, you can see me. I have a solution to that. That's what they said. Baba, I know you don't drink uh, Coke or Fanta. Don't worry. I will make sure that you get what you take. So they are going to be serving now. They are going to be serving salad. They are going to be serving, uh, I mean, when it's time for food, I'm going to tell you how they are going to go around and get what you want. There's a lot to eat. Uh, you know, old age comes with uh, wisdom. You know, and I thank God that Baba, you know, I always go to him when I have issues to discuss, you know, for advice. I always go to him and I always come back a, a wiser man. So I'm going to give you this joke. I know most of us here, if not all, are Nigerian. You know about Mulwe. Who has been in Mulwe before? Don't tell me if you were born in America. Everybody here has been in Mulwe, I'm sure. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Mulwe. You can have uh, 50 people sitting and uh, 100 people standing. 99. 49 city fella, 99 standing. If they are not careful, the way they are rushing, they will be rushing, they will be rushing. You can find somebody's hand in your pocket. We are rushing now. There was this man. There was this man in a old man in a, in a mobile bus. The conductor was coming to asking everybody for their money. The man checked his pocket. The old man's wallet was gone. Is there any shaky man here? Anybody from Ishekri, please? Anyway, ask Ishekri, yes. Was that Ishekri, man? Said, who took my wallet? Who took my wallet? Hey. Like not what happened in 1967 happened here today. Who took my wallet? Everybody started looking. Who took this man's wallet? Like not what happened in 1967 happened here again. Give me back my wallet. Who I say? I beg you, this old man, don't let him come and cost us all these people that used to do and voodoo. If you are, you know, you took his wallet, just give it back, or I don't want to in this uh, post. Don't let the man not cost you. Everybody, they look. Say, I said, who took my wallet? Let me know what happened in 1967. Happy year again today, oh. When the man shouted for about uh, five minutes, the person that took his wallet, after everybody started threatening, the man dropped his wallet. Say, okay. Oh, Papa, you found the wallet. Oh, thank God. Baba paid. There was one, one little girl, one teenager by Baba said, you see Baba, you know, Baba, I'm a student of history. I would like to know what happened in 1967. You want to know what happened in 1967? Yes, I'm a student of history. I study history. I want to know what happened in 1967. I was coming from, I took a bus to Yanapaya. Somebody took my wallet. He said, Baba, what happened? I take my bus. I take the waka from the Dumota to the other Baja. People start there want to show this man just be breaking. If you want to waka again to them, this man just breaking. If one man gonna make you say, so you mean you are just shouting all this thing because of you take my waka? Everybody say you go cross us. Baba ask her. I mean, are you taking my wallet? Okay, that's one. I call Baba, Baba Salakwa. That's that is me. Baba Salakwa. We uh, we are live right now on the live video today. Dot com. This event is being recorded live on live video today. Dot com. It's being broadcast live on live video today. Dot com. Um. I hope you are not charging extra for that. You are charging. You do not do anything for me. You know, when I just said, uh, when I gave that joke, I noticed that some people laughed, you know. Some people were giggling. Some people, even to laugh was a problem. 
helps you give you jokes and you don't laugh. You know, we had a research. We did a research. Why some people help you report to some gathering? They will joke. Some people, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so the research, the result of research was that some people have uh, what you call mouth odor. So to laugh becomes a problem. I said, what is, okay, we want to find three or four ways. You know, in my church, I stopped attending early morning mass because of this problem. You know, in Nigeria, you have, to, you have some people in churches, we start mass from 6 o'clock, 6 to 7 30, 8 30 to 10. You know? I stopped attending the 7 o'clock mass because of this problem. We were at church. Okay, the hymn of today is 8, 2, 3, something, let's read. There's one woman on my side saying, no. Let's give me the info. Let's uh, let's share. <laughs> let's share the info. As I open my info like this, I I give my info. When you just open a map, you give me a certain thing. Bye bye. Bye bye. That is one way. Another way, if you go party, you go party. My man won't go party. He give you because he added. Uh, um, every candidate is speaking, and they come. And you have to say, no, God, no, God. As you open your mouth, you begin to cry seriously. No, so you get a problem. That's the second way. In America, when you go to your dental office, and your dentist begins to wear a mask before he sees you, you know, so you get a problem. <laughs> you know, so you get a problem. You go to dental office, your dentist is wearing mask. The dentist and is going to do a major operation. You know you have problem. The fourth way, the fourth way you will know the man that has mask on. Any time you come around his voice, around his friends, they begin to argue, argue, argue. Ah, no, it's not like that. It's like that. It's not like that. What's the man start like this? Ah, it's not like that. No way. They don't finish. That is the fourth way of knowing. You win all arguments. No, so put your hand like end of arguments. Nobody's laughing, nobody's laughing. Alright. You know, it's not easy to be old. Especially the women. I'm talking about women now. It's not easy to be old. When you have an old aunt and or old uh, whatever, and then uh, you people go, this person is doing wedding. Ah, you can, when are you going to have your own wedding now? Ah, when are you going to have your own wedding now? Every time. You go to another wedding. Aunt is coming, when are you having your wedding? Now? Everybody's getting married. This person is more passable. Why are you going to, when are you going to do your wedding? Okay, the solution. I went. My auntie has been disturbing me. All the weddings. So one day, we went for somebody's burial. I said, Auntie, I said, what are you going to bury you now? <laughs> <laughs> the woman dress. So because of the ask you say you marry, you make her die, eh? Okay, if you like marry, if you like no marry, let me just not no cost me, eh? Nigeria. Nigeria, where we all come from, very wonderful place. The more you look, the less you see. Every little thing. You go to a ministry, there's a minister, director general, the directors. Everybody get office. Everybody get title. Any little thing they want to do, they will the form committee. Any little thing they want to do, they form committee. Committee for this. Committee for that. This one committee, that one committee. So, they went and met the president to that and say, Why? All these committees, everything committee, committee, you put people there, you bring them for committee, 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 you put people there, committee, committee. Everything is committee, this is a wasted now. President, you have to do something about it. President said, Okay, come tomorrow. I'm going to think about what I'm going to do about it. They went tomorrow. Say, okay, President, so these committees are wasting money. What are we going to do about this? Okay. My solution is this I'm forming a new committee now to find, to find out why there are too many committees. <laughs>
feel that our politicians are very fun. They get their salaries, a lot of corruption, they steal money. So why do politicians in Nigeria steal so much money? They build so many houses. They acquire so much property. There was a research on that. Let's find out why this is going right like that. So they came back now. They went to purchase you know, pastor. Find out why, why is too much, too much wasted? Why do people just stealing money and building houses for themselves? They're not even citizens of common people. When pastor went to pastor, when pastor went to prayer, prayer Went, went to the mountain and came back. He said, what they found out was that why the politicians are building so many houses and they are doing so many things for themselves. They found out that when you die, eh? Eh? you know you say you go to heaven or hell. The people that are going to hell, it's Nigeria they sent them to. So they say, if they build the houses already in Nigeria, they have property. So when they just go to hell, then they have place to stay. They said, give your treasures in heaven. The corrupt people are building their treasures in Nigeria. Because when they die, that's where they're going. Dinner place, and uh, you're free to get what you what you want there. And as soon as you are done, it's going to be table uh, 13, table 12, 11. I am going to uh, ask uh, the pastor, pastor, the pastor that doesn't deceive himself. That's the that's the uh, that's the interpretation of his name in uh, English. The pastor that doesn't deceive himself, doesn't deceive anybody. I It's good. I don't deceive myself. It's going to play over the food before the food uh, before we start eating. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you Lord for the food that we're about to take. We thank you Lord for the provision of the food. We ask oh God for your heavenly blessings to rest upon this food, oh God. We ask oh God that you will sanctify it for the nourishment of our bodies. And we ask oh God of heaven. That in the process of all things here, let your name alone be exalted. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Table 9 and Table 10. Table 9 and 10. I want to call on Dr. Salako uh, to give a uh, biography of his dad right now.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know it's time for us to eat. But let's glorify the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, it's good to be in God's presence. And um, I want to say a big thank you to you all for coming today to celebrate with uh, uh, my family. My, uh, my wife, who is the brain behind all what is going on today, I want to say a big thank you to her. I didn't even know she, she put my name as uh, the person giving the biography. I thought my brother was going to do that. So, <laughs> so I will just tell you briefly a little bit about um, the 85 year old man that calls himself 80. Yeah. He was born in, uh, on February 6, 1928. My dad was born into a struggling family. His dad was a farmer, his mom also, you know, they were all just struggling. So a family of five, and my dad looked at everything and said that things must change. And he was born uh, in Ikenia, you guys know the state, where Chief Aula was from. This is one of the best cities in Nigeria. So he grew up in Ikenia, where you know, he struggled all through primary school and all that. He wanted, he finished I wanted to go to college, but he couldn't because the parents were so poor. He decided to, one of them, the big brothers in town was wealthy, was working in the battle. decided to go with that gentleman to the battle. He actually went to approach the gentleman. Can you take me to the battle? Let me go start my life. He was a young man then. And that was in the 1940s. So he went to the battle, started life there. And because he's, he, He's a very hard working man. He knew what he wanted for himself. So he said when he got to his battle, he started working and he realized this is not what I want. He decided to move to Lagos. It was in Lagos that he met with um, good people. So he was able to find a, a good job and that was what made him what he is today. And part of the places he worked for, he worked for, uh, I think, better things. UTC, and as he always tells me, in his family, he was the first one that bought a car. <laughs> he was the first person that bought a car in his family, which was an achievement. Also, the first person that built a house. So, when he came to see me in the United States, then I already bought my house. So, he now said, What his father did to him, he will do it to me. When he built his house, his father went on the first floor and, and <laughs> was skidding from the first floor to the ground floor and said, oh, my son built a house, not just one story, two stories, started skidding. And my dad said, what do I do this? I said, no, don't do that in America. <laughs> Our house, my carpet, so I don't have time to be, to be cleaning carpet, yeah? So, it, to cut a long story short, he did not... Uh, see our uh, live life in, a very, in an easy way. He struggled. He struggled so much to achieve what he achieved. And when we were growing up, he was a man that was so interested in education. That was one thing that I didn't enjoy my when I was very young, when I was going to school. Because every time he would tell, don't carry your book. Every time we were on vacation, we can we we're not on vacation. If he comes and sees you watching TV, no, no, you're in trouble. Have you read your books today? I'll tell you, yes, I read my book. No, 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 did you read the newspaper? I'll say yes. Okay, tell me, what's, what do they have in the editorial column? I don't even know what the editorial column is. So if I, if I don't know what to tell you, come take the newspaper, sit down here, read it, and come and tell me what you read. So what he did to us made us where we are today. All of my siblings were all graduates. Because he was a disciplinarian, he wanted us to have education. And we listened to him, because we knew he wanted the best for us. So, as part of what he did make me want to today, even though I did not enjoy my vacation, 
I was always back on your book, back on your book. The book paid off. It paid off. So I just want to say thank you to you for what you did to me and my siblings. For everything, they're saying thank you. And that's why we are gathered today to celebrate your 85th birthday. When you come 90, we do that in Nigeria. I'll be in Nigeria. I don't want to be 90 year old in America. <laughs> you all know what that means. So, so once again, I want to say a big thank you to you all for coming. We appreciate your presence, and I hope you all enjoy yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you. So table one and two and table 12 is on, is on the line right now. So just be a little bit patient with me. The food is going to go around. Table 12, table one, and table two. Table 12, table one, and table two. To let you know, if you want any coffee, right behind the hall, there's a coffee table. If you want coffee, there's coffee right behind the hall. Coffee, there's coffee behind the hall.
Thank <laughs> you.